Hey everybody, I am here at Rocky River Park in um, Cleveland area and I have found this beautiful location behind me that I love the wet uh, reflection of the building in that sidewalk there, or that's like a dirt road. These are all historical buildings and so I thought it'd be really fun to kind of paint that scene back there. What I really want to show you today too is how to plein air paint from your car. So I'm going to get set up inside my car and paint that scene. All right, let's get going. So here I am in my car, enjoying the warmth of the heated seat, uh, just everything I need. And um, so what I'm doing is I'm just taking everything out and just kind of setting it up here and seeing where I am. Got my brushes, which fit nice and neatly into my cup holder down there. My paint, setting that off to the side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my palette ready. So I'll be right back. I have the titanium white out, cadmium yellow medium. And I like to paint with enough paint out on my palette because it saves me time in while I'm painting so I don't have to keep coming back for more paint. So it's, it's one way that you can speed up your efficiency process there. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and I keep all my paints in a Ziploc baggie. Burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, actually it's alizarin permanent. It, alizarin crimson, they say it doesn't have the light fastness that um, a lizard permanent has so and they cost the same so I guess if you're gonna go with one go with a lizard permanent I'm I may put a little bit of phthalo green out it's just part of my normal palette routine I use it to mix other colors I never use it just straight all right so that's it for my palette now, um, off to the side here I put a little bit of linseed oil in this cup and then I will show you what I have okay so down below here I have my little bucket of Gamsol and then my brushes, my bottle of water, all my plein air stuff, and all set. Okay, so that is my scene that I'm gonna be painting. And I'm gonna start out with a thumbnail sketch first. So I'm just gonna draw uh, a roughly the same kind of shape as my eight by 10 canvas. And I'm thinking about where I want kind of the major divisions in this. I've got this wet path going this way and sort of a patch of grass this way, paths coming and going. I like that. And um, the house or this building kind of off to this side. I don't want to make it running off the edge so I'm adjusting the size that I need it to be for my um, painting. So I want some of the sky to show through some of the trees here. And I really want to show some of the sunlight hitting the edge of this building. So I'm just sort of getting all the characters in place at the moment. Uh, I may put this building back in here just because it's interesting and it shows some more architectural stuff in the area here. But I'm not going to put those red ones back there. So there's a backdrop of a big dark pine tree here. And I'm going to use that as an anchor for one of the darkest values in the painting. In fact, this whole background here I can use as one of my darker areas. When I squint at the whole scene, it's pretty much a lot of middle tone values over there, but I want to um, give it some range here. So I'm going to make this area my darker value. And if I squint way down, I can see this all as one medium tone mass, including the roof of this building here. If I squint down, it's pretty much the same value as that. So again, what I'm doing here is just uniting this overall shape of values that I see in this area. So they, it's called notan. Notan is a Japanese word, and it means basically that percentage of dark versus light and that attractive ratio between those, um, that dark and light balance. So I, and then you want it to be interesting shapes too. So this is my darker mass there. And then I have the grass coming down and there are variations in this grass. Some of it is a little bit more middle tone and some of it's lighter, but as it goes back this way, it really lightens up a lot. And I really want this center area to be the main focus of interest because we've got these really cool reflections down in the wet, uh, muddy road. So I want that to, and then there's sunlight and shadows on the front of this building. 
So I'll put this in a little bit of shade here, a little bit of shade here, and this is grass. And this is also grass. And then there's this really cool tree coming up this way. So we're gonna give this a little bit of life and attention, but again, it's about the same value as what's surrounding it. So it doesn't need to really stand out that much, but it does need to support everything else. So we will just let it be there and be cool, but not steal the show. Since this is the show right in here. Okay, now again, this line here shoots us right off the canvas that way. So we wanna neutralize that and I can make all these values really similar where the road and the grass and everything meet and run off. And you can adjust those um, strong diagonals that way, just kind of soften that. And same thing with over here. I don't really wanna shoot the viewer off this way, so I'm neutralizing these values. This is gonna be green, this is gonna be tan, but it's not gonna shoot us off because I don't want a strong contrast. So just thinking through these problems and solving these, there's a little bit of shutters on this building. So I'll put some of those in and just really focus my attention on that area. All right, so I think that this is a suitable plenary um, thumbnail sketch. So with this as my focus, I'm going to get started on my canvas. All right, so now I have this really um, bright periwinkle blue canvas and I thought it'd be kind of fun to try something a little bit different. Actually, it's radically different. So we are doing this. I just chose this color because I've got um, really neutral tones over there. So if I start with something that's really um, vibrant, it might come through and just have this sort of interesting electric feel. So you can play around with things like that. So taking a little bit of Damsol and on my palette, you won't be able to see very well right now, but I am just taking a thinned down mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and I'm gonna draw on, using my thumbnail sketch right here, uh, my design. So I'm gonna set this, something like that. And I'm just setting my palette here, my open end box, right on my lap. I've done this in the past with other designs, other easel styles, and it works too. So however you have to make this work. Okay, so according to my sketch, I had the trees sort of framing this area in here like this and I can put sky holes in through there if I want to which I will that's kind of my dividing line right there and then my building's gonna sit about in this location according to what I've drawn and you can see I'm just holding my brush loosely just trying to get the overall flavor for where I'm gonna put things This is the grassy patch there. And then this road just sort of has this kind of wet area here. That's all gonna be wet. And then this is just a grassy area. Okay, so now I'm tightening up my design. So looking at a little bit at my sketch and a little bit at nature over there, the front of the building and the side have a very subtle shift in angle. And the front goes like this. It's just a nice kind of straightforward design right here. And I'm looking at the top angle of the building here and I'm gonna hold my brush up to it and use my, the, I'm laying my brush on the top roof line of that to see where, how that goes. I'm pretty close. Might be a little bit extreme. And then this roof line is not quite as extreme of a peak, so it levels out just a little bit. And then this angle back here is going to parallel this angle here. And bring this guy over that way. And then all these lines, you can lock your finger on the side of your canvas to get all your verticals exactly. When you're doing buildings, 
your verticals have got to be perfect otherwise it's going to look um, droopy or whatever and you don't want to have that okay so that's fine i've got my paper towel here all right so there's my building and the grass is going to come down and it's all fun and games till somebody parks their van right in the middle of everything so i've got a car in the middle <laughs> of my whole scene so i'll just work around it so the grass over here comes about like this reaches a point over here and then I did have these buildings over here and I think that they have a nice um, addition to everything so maybe I'll bring this grass patch lower and these buildings here. Oops. pretty soon I'm not going to need this drawing anymore so I'll set that off to the side here pretty soon and this roof line over that way And I can just sort of suggest some of the detail and information on this. I don't want to really put a whole lot of attention into that building back there. Okay, and then I had the darker value of this pine tree here. This is all my back support in this area. And the grass over that way comes down. There's some grassy areas. And then again, the road as it is over here, it kind of goes off, but I talked about just neutralizing that area. Okay, and then I'm gonna be putting my big tree right about here, which kind of broadens the, the whole scene here. So I'm glad about that. That'll be fine right in there. And I'll get to play with some of those branches a little bit too. And I think I'm gonna skip putting all the picnic tables and things in. Okay, so grabbing, grabbing a bigger brush, let's get in. And I want to establish the values first before we get into putting color on. So I just have a really thin mixture still of what I'm using. And I'm remember how in my thumbnail sketch, I haven't abandoned that yet. I am making all of this my strongest area of value. So rubbing that in place. Oh, and I'm often asked about toning the canvas. I did tone this canvas like months ago, so I'm not rubbing out on this. I won't be putting uh, rubbing out the wider value. This is the older canvas I had. It's linen though, so I really like it. And I thought, why not use it today? Something totally different. Okay, and then I had decided that that roof here, without really losing it, I wanted to just make it sort of one with that whole value scheme and bringing this value down and then with a little bit lighter pressure I am establishing the value of the grass kind of the value of the front of this building if I squint down at it the shift from the front of this white building to the grass is very subtle okay, and it's over here as is the the dirt and soil color here Okay, so just like that, it's a very simple way to start your plein air here. Okay, now you can see too how by just doing this simple step too of unifying the values, you can see too where I'm going with things. I'll take a little bit of white here just to establish sort of a lighter range in everything we're working on, just so you can start to see. So that's gonna be, these are gonna be my white lighter value areas. Okay, so that gives us some perspective. All right, jumping into color now. I'm gonna get rid of that, and you can see too that it starts to match what I had come up with as a sketch. All right going to now to a size six gonna work uh, from the background to the foreground so just taking some white it's kind of an overcast sky today too it's it looks sunny and warm outside but it's 
you get out there for any length of time and all of a sudden your fingers start to feel cold. <laughs> so I enjoy doing this from the car sometimes. All right, so, and then you can just rest it on the steering wheel too if you want. Some people I've seen wrap bungee cords around their, um, their painting and kind of clamp this around and clamp it. You can do that too, that would work. If I'd brought one, uh, I probably would have been doing that. So white and ultramarine blue and the smallest touch of burnt sienna will help neutralize that sky and just kind of give it an overcast look. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more sienna and blue to that gray mixture to start putting in the sky, the tree line. We're still early spring, so the trees have this gray feeling to them. And I want that edge there where the trees meet the sky to be really soft. Because when I squint down at my main focus right in here, what do those trees do peripherally when I look at them out of the corner of my eyes? If I just stay looking at my center of interest, what are those tree, what does this tree line look like? And it's, there's really not a whole lot of detail and information. If I were to stare at these trees, I can see all the branches and twigs and, and then the painting becomes about that. And I don't want it about that. I want it about this. So you have to, have to, have to keep your focus and your main objective in the front of your mind at all times. Even when painting other parts, that's, that's the trick. <laughs> what is it you really want to say and just focus on that. So I'm adding a few patches of white sky through, it's not pure white, it's that lighter sky color as I saw that. Just a few, squinting down at it, where do I see them? And I'm using, uh, I haven't used any linseed oil yet. So far, this is just the paint. And if I squint down too at my painting and I look back at that scene above the shed roof, what, uh, does it match at all? Is it, am I getting close? So don't be afraid to squint at what it is you're doing too. And just compare the two. taking this in little bits and pieces. Now I'm noticing as the trees get closer to the ground, they get a little darker gray and there's less of the sky coming through, obviously. It's denser foliage down there, even this time of year. I just don't see that much. I can come back through here later and just pull out a few of the lines for some of the tree trunks. You don't need to do too many. When you are doing this, it's, it's always nice um, to have music or whatever it is you're working on. Um, just sort of, that's what I love about plain carring. <laughs> I mean, you can roll down the window and get the full effect of the birds and all that, but sometimes it's nice just to have that serene atmosphere. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre in here too, just to give it some warmth. A yellow ochre over there and over here, right into the sienna and sky mixture. Okay, and I'll get some of this over here. And I saw that as I squinted down at this, I wanted this a little bit more solid, not so broken up with um, whites and sky pieces. So just unifying. Always look for ways to unify and connect. I don't want to get too far away from my thumbnail sketch because what I responded to about that was the strength of this one piece of shape. So let's bring that back together as a unified piece. It's very easy to wander off from your main objective, so you don't want to do that. The trick about painting inside your car is that you can't get back from your painting. That's why I can't underscore enough the importance of squinting. Squinting will help it start to feel like you're back further, and then you can see it all as a unified whole, so it's really, really important. 
And I'm thinking too that this needs to be a little bit lighter value. So I'm adding some white to my mixture on my palette of that. It just gives it a little more atmosphere and it keeps the painting also from looking a little too heavy. So that was my one value connection in here, that color. So just making sure that stays the same. So if you're new to my channel, um, occasionally while I'm painting, I get talking about uh, workshops and um, other things that I do. I have a business that I'm a co-founder of called Renaissance Creative Arts, and we do all kinds of stuff. We do, we've released a video just a video pre-release offer it's not it's it'll be released on March 8th of 2019 and um, very excited about that it's painting ocean waves and seascapes and um, so that is gonna be I'm really excited about that the ocean is just it's in my heart I love it and so we did uh, when we were in San Diego I painted um, the ocean and that is our most recent video and that is going to be released March 8th and uh, looking forward to that um, we have all kinds of free offers and free specials and discounts and things when we release a video too so take advantage of those I'll put a link below and you can see what that's all about I also also write a workbook to go with all of our lessons that we do um, just really detailing detailing and finalizing um, more information. Sometimes it's better to see things written and you have an easier time really comprehending when you can actually see it and visualize things. So I always include that. Art education, you, you know, helping people is most important. That's, I think that everyone can do this. I have no doubt that everyone can do it. All that's required is interest and um, if you have the interest, there isn't anything you can't do. And I firmly believe that. I used to teach children how to paint and how to draw. And um, so I know you can do it. And th really, there's nothing more rewarding to than learning something, working at it, figuring it out, seeing something on your wall that you did. That, you know, it's unique. It's your unique fingerprint on life and how you saw things and how you responded to beauty and no one else has your vision and sees life through your lens and um, I just think that it's it's such a rewarding thing too and what a legacy to leave behind for your family um, you know we life is all about who we connect with who we touch and the, the way people remember us and so I think that um, you know, whether you ever sell a painting or you just do it for fun or you really want to make a career out of it, whatever it is you want to do, um, I like to be able to help as much as I can from what I've learned from my experience. And so that's what I do. If you're new to my channel, that's what I'm all about. So it's kind of a grab bag of videos that I do. Sometimes we do watercolor, sometimes we're doing plein air. A lot of times we do plein air. Um, other times we're doing portraits and landscapes and still lifes or learning to work from photos or whatever the case because there's many many interests that even individual artists have a lot of times we're exploring and we don't know what we might like until we've tried it so I I've have about 30 years painting experience and I've tried all sorts of different things and so I like to share those experiences with you so this is just that tree that I'm doing and I wanted a darker value but I didn't want it to jump out too much so I'm softening it with the background sky in there as I'm working and then I'm letting the bottom just sort of dissolve into what I have going on with the background there and I'm putting a few little pieces of accents and darker areas in there okay so let's just get a little bit of information over here now I'm taking my brush and I'm running it through my paint, forward and backward and forward and backward, flattening it so that you get a nice chiseled edge like that. And I'm just gonna put in a few, just to suggest a few little trees back in here. More sienna, more blue will give you a darker um, color, darker value. 
so on. I'm kind of just letting it drop and drag and twiddle and wiggle like that. And you don't need very many, just a few to suggest trees. Okay, I think that that is fine. I may come back and work with that a little bit more, but I don't want to. I don't want it to be about all that. So I'm cleaning my brush off. A little container of Gamsol down here. That's my paper towel. So far, you can see that this has been a relatively easy and pain-free process. Um, you know, anything that is anything you can do to get out there and paint to make it a little bit easier. Sometimes you have to plan car, <laughs> and that's okay. You don't have to be out there with frozen fingers and frozen toes and um, you know, stay at my seat on my van here the, it's a heated seat and I love it so I am happy and I've got a chiseled edge of my brush as I'm working with a little bit of sienna and ochre just pulling out this roof line a little bit more as I had it in there keeping my lines as parallel as possible I want that a little bit lighter gray Pointing down at that roof. I just want to see it as one piece of value. Simple piece. What shape is that? That's that's always my main um, way of dealing with perspective. What is that shape? What is the shape of the background supporting that shape? How do I get it to read accurately without really, you know, stressing my brain cells too much? <laughs> You can do one point, two point perspective and all that, and, and that's great, but sometimes I don't want to sit here and, and do all that. I just want to get the paint on the canvas. So I've mixed up a little bit more blue or gray to get this roof line back here. So I'm asking myself, how does that roof separate itself from those background trees? Because they are really close. So I'm making it a little bit lighter in value. And if you put a chiseled edge on it, even if it's almost the same color and value, it'll read as um, different from the background. So let's go a little bit lighter and hit that brighter. That's fine. And then I've got one over here, the little one. I'll go like this. And these are really small pieces of roof, so um, I need my paper towel. So you don't really have to worry too much about it, but there is a value shift on the roof, um, depending on the way the light is hitting it. Usually this lower part of a roof line is getting more sky because it's not as vertical as it is up here. So that's gonna be a little darker. This is gonna be a little lighter as the light moves, depending on where your light is. All right, grabbing a little smaller brush so I can get these background buildings, because again, working my way from the back, moving forward. Um, grabbing some white and yellow ochre on my palette. And a little bit of blue, because this, this is the shadow part of the building. So it still has to look like a white building, but the yellow ochre and white as my base will help give it that illusion of white that's in shadow. And we'll do it on the front of this building too, the little one down here. I guess that roof really kind of matches the building, so I'll have to adjust that. So let's make that roof a little more blue, blue-gray. There we go. Okay. And this building comes down like this. And then the, the front of the building, I'm taking white, mostly white, and a touch of cad yellow. Just the smallest touch will really make it look sunlit. So let's see what happens if I do that. Just a piece of paint. You don't want to go nuts on that and make it too detailed. Same with, we'll add a little bit more yellow to the smaller building because it just looks more yellow. Okay. Just in that angle. It's not upwards, it's downwards. Go with that again. 
again. And I can clean up the bottom here with the grass when I get that far. I need to clean up this roof line here. And over here. A little more white. Okay, that's fine for that building. I don't want to get too detailed. I don't even know if I'm going to put windows in. I may or may not. I don't know. Okay. Let's get some grass going. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some um, cadmium yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre, and then I've got that white that is on the palette already. So let's see. I think I want that a little bit lighter and bluer because that's about the color that I want more up front. Warm colors are going to come at you. The cooler colors will recede. So I'm seeing this color. That's too high. I'm going to bring that down a little back there. Let that just kind of fade off that way. And cleaning my brush off, I should get a little bit bigger brush. So just cleaning that a little bit in there. And I want a softer edge where this green grass meets the tree line. So just wiping my brush off, I'm dragging that over the top of that. And then I can just drag some of it up into the tree line too to make it look like bushes or whatever. And then again here, I'm neutralizing everything as it goes off the edge. Okay, so grabbing some more of that green and kind of shaping the landscape around the front of these buildings. A little bit cooler. You can cut into that. And then we're going straight across here and down this way. All right, that's looking like grass back there. Keeping it really simple and straightforward. Since I have this green pile mixed up here, let's put it in front of this building too. A little bit of more white over here. And I see it in front of this. I can um, work in the shape of that building around the grass or paint the building into the grass or paint the grass into the building, however it has to work. Always work from general to specific. So in this, in the case of this grass, right now I'm just laying down a really basic um, color and then I can come back in with a little more subtle details for now, just big broad areas of simplicity. And then I'm noticing as it goes back, it's a little more blue over there. Ooh, too dark. And I'll just let it kind of fade up into those trees a little bit too. Again, according to my thumbnail sketch, I'd wanted that to have that strength and then the greens to have their strength in this um, value that comes down below. Sometimes I just grab a little bit of sienna too to scumble it down first and then I'll put the color over the top. So maybe a little bit of yellow ochre and sienna in this area and then I'll work some of the green over that just to let it sort of play through like the dirt. <clears throat> okay, so that's good for now. I'm going to come back and work on this building. Okay, so grabbing a little bit of white and yellow ochre, a little bit of blue to give us that shadowy white color over here. I think that could still be pushed a little bit more. A little more shadow in there. I can add the windows later. For now, I just want to get the shape of this accurate.
Okay, and then there's a shadow under the roof line over here. So we'll let that just sort of connect that way. And that'll have a stronger impact when I put the sunlight on there, but I'm gonna paint that a little more blue. And I see it a little bit more blue with Sienna over here. And just a touch down that side. Okay, wiping my brush off. Oh, I'm gonna put that chimney in real quick. Burnt Sienna Ultramarine Blue will give me the shadowed side. Boop. And Burnt Sienna and Yellow Cad Yellow and a little bit of white will give me the lit side of it. Let's get some white in there. Very easy. Just like that. I'm tempted to put smoke <laughs> coming out, but I'll leave it. Okay, so getting the sunlit side here, cleaning my brush off. Grabbing some white and a little bit of cadmium yellow. That's going to really make it look sunlit if you don't get too much yellow, otherwise it'll look banana yellow. <laughs> there, that's looking sunlit. And I want this to be clean. Remember, this is my center of interest. I'll come back through with windows later. And see how that one back there is just a little bit cooler because it's further back. So I like that a little bit less over there. Okay, now I'm taking a little bit of that phthalo green and some ultramarine blue. And I want to neutralize that with a little bit, teeny bit of sienna because down here on this building, there's some of that green that was really part of that, that color scheme back, way back when this was built. So that's also the color of the sh uh, shutters. So I'm just going to suggest some of those. And you don't have to get really fussy. In fact, I strongly recommend not getting fussy. On the sunlit side, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow, cad yellow to that green, uh, just to show that they're getting hit by more sun. So there's two over here. Now I am going to take, I cleaned my brush off, just taking some light blue and I want to put in some of these shadows of the tree on the side of this building. But you don't want to make them too thingy um, to where they're really kind of obvious and they're standing out and that's kind of weird. So I want that to be soft, really much softer. this up here too because I don't want that dark line there throwing off my world. Okay. Now there's a few little dark spots in here that I was just cleaning up. I don't want those messing things up. Okay, now there's a bush right down here in front so I kind of want to get that because it has a neat airy, delicate feel. I'll give it a shadow. Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit more sunlight on the grass. So cad yellow and white with a little bit, the smallest touch of phthalo green will give you that early spring green grass.
and I'm, I'm letting that be softer and more neutral back there because I really want to draw the eye this way. You can have varying shades of that bright springy green, so add a little more white to it. Whatever. Just don't, you don't want to overwork it, so just let it just sort of be like that. I'll put some on this side too. A hard edge. We'll just let that be softer. And while I'm thinking about it, I've got a tree back here that I think it needs to help kind of soften that sharp break there like that. All right, paper towel is getting gross. Okay, now to get some of this dirt in, I'm going to use a bigger brush. Let's grab, this is a size 4, I guess that'll be just fine. A little bit of sienna and blue. I'm just going to use what I already have on my palette, some of that um, burnt sienna. Let's come back over here. Oh, that's too dark. But that's how you got to do it, you know, just put a little bit down. Is it right? Is it wrong? Let's see what we've got. Okay, over there it's brighter, but again, I don't want to shoot the eye right off the canvas over here, so I'm going to let that be quieter. And in fact, I'm going to use this sort of all over, and I'll come over in areas where I need to add a little brighter, a little more punch. So getting this in place. Kind of a gray-brown. And I'm also reshaping some of this grass because I want that a little better shape. Well, I haven't run out of gas yet, so I'm doing great. <laughs> Had to check. Okay, so I'm bringing this road over this way. I like that. I like where this is going with that color and um, that overall design. And I'm taking some of the green too and just sort of letting that play inside there a little. I don't want it to have a really cut out appearance. So um, whatever there like that, I'll just pull it over. It makes it feel like the road is, is more a part of the, the scene. Now everything up closer to you is going to have more, um, more color, more paint, um, more texture, contrast. Let's get some of this green down here. I just want to cover that and then I'll come back over there and give that a little more interest. I need some yellow, cat yellow, a little ultramarine blue. And this greener, richer tones over here. Okay, so I'm gonna come back through here now and get in more of the darker patches of the road and then I will add in the wet areas where it feels like wet mud. So a little sienna and ultramarine blue. And I'm squinting down at that, seeing where I see some ruts in this road. Holding my brush very loosely. And I see them coming around like this. Without them being too contrasty and too, ooh, look at me. Um, I want them to be present, but not screaming for attention. So some of these are coming this way. That's too loud. So I'm going with the darks first because I'm going to put in the lights after that. 
just like doing an ocean wave. If you put the darks in first and then you do the sparkles on top of that, they seem to have more of an impact by pushing that um, a little bit darker area. Okay, so I think that's fine. I don't want to do too much detail there. Um, oh, I just saw something I need. Just a, I'm just taking some of this white and the chiseled edge. I'm just going right along this roof. <laughs> it's the little things. All right. <laughs> okay, now the road wetness. Taking some of that white, everything in a water reflection is going to be darker than what reality is. So I want to take maybe not that dark, but somewhere in between there. Squinting down at that, I'm looking... Where does the reflection begin? About here. And I'm just painting what I see when I'm squinting. As it comes down. I'm painting the background white first that is in the overall glare of the road. And then I'll come back through with the, the brighter highlights as I see them where they are. And there's a little bit over here for that guy. It's too far over. Yeah, we don't want to leave those guys out. Oops, this needs more. It's coming along. And so these are kind of a little bit directional in how they're helping the viewer too. Um, work your way through the painting. Alright, now I'm grabbing a little bit brighter white with a tiny bit of that cad yellow in it just to show that it this is a reflection from that building so I want to keep that same white that is that's that. So just with these clear little spots of obvious puddle we got some over here. Let's do a few back here. A little bit this way. It's pretty dry in the road over here. But I do want to take some yellow ochre with a little bit of blue and make that road look a little like packed dry dirt. So I'm just letting this sort of scumble over the top. A little bit more white. I think I'm going to just take a little bit of this too and go right over the top. It helps if you make the sound effects. We learned this from Bob Ross, you know. Sound effects help you with painting. <laughs> we know that. Okay, 
All right, that is feeling a little more like a wet road. And I'm squinting down at my road too to see if it is starting to echo that. And I'm feeling like it's starting to. So, you know, I could definitely pick this apart all day and, and hang out and just kind of play with it some more and see where I end up with it. But for a plein air study, you want to get the feel and then move on. All right, so now I'm going to get some of this grass area a little bit more refined, taking some cad yellow, some ultramarine blue, and again, with what I already have down, I'm just kind of playing and working around that. Scoop up the paint right on my brush and letting these variations just sort of do this on here. And I like the idea of, there's a shadow on that um, piece of land over there, on this patch, that sh makes it feel like there's another building here, which there is, it's a big red barn. Um, so we'll take some of that blue and give that a shadowy look right here. That's not shadowy, there we go. There. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of glad the purple's gone. It wasn't working for me. <laughs> I hope that, um, I mean, it's fun to try, but the longer I was looking at it here, the more I thought, ew, I don't like the purple. So I'm glad it's gone. <laughs> but, and then, um, okay, so I'm taking a little bit of cad yellow and phthalo green. That's too bright. Let's get some yellow ochre to neutralize that. And working in some of this mirror grass. Grass is up close to us. We'll get some sienna and yellow ochre in here too because I want this to feel like dirt and some of this wet mud around this area. Taking some ultramarine blue and sienna right along the edges. Let's get this a little bit more aggressive. Some sharp accents. Kind of interesting boundaries. A lot, of, a lot of dirt and mud in this area. I'm glad I didn't walk around too much. <laughs> that gives that some definition back there a little bit too. Okay, so a little bit more grass in here. And that's fine. I don't want it too um, showy and distracting because I want to keep the focus in here. All right, now this tree. So let's grab, uh, it's pretty much gray. So I'm mixing up uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, some white. Let's grab some yellow ochre. And I want to take and just map out where this tree is going to be in here. Let's, I'm looking at my thumbnail sketch. I had the base foot of the tree about right here. I think aesthetically that will work too. Let's make it a little bit more in this area. Just drag it down like that. branch coming out like this. It doesn't have to be exact. I like to do tree studies where I really do um, work on every angle and, and really get in there and study trees, but in this context um, you're making a plenary study so it's about um, making this study work. And so every tree branch isn't going to be appropriate in this situation. Grabbing a little bit smaller brush, this is a size 2, and I'm just going to take and just sort of swirl and twirl like that a little bit. Just enough so that we really get the feeling of um, this tree and all of these really cool 
twists and turns. Now I've got a neutral background there and the tree is kind of a neutral color. So what I need to do is adjust whatever that background color is, make what's in front of it the opposite. So I have this dark pine tree here. If I want this tree branch to stand out in front, I need to make it a little bit lighter. Like that. And um, where I have the sky that's darker over there, I can make the tree a little bit darker there. Or where the sky is lighter, I can make the tree darker. So I think I want this to be more lit on this side with the yellow ochre and white and some of the gray that I already had. Give that some interest there. And you also want to pay attention to where this, the light is going to be hitting the tree too. You can't just at random start putting in um, light branches and dark branches. So um, just also be really cognizant of that. And then uh, just to kind of wrap up some of this here. Again, the idea is to suggest more than anything. We don't need all the information. My brush is falling apart. And just really delicately, I'm holding the brush very, very loosely, um, letting it twirl and just sort of like that. Sometimes it's two, it's knowing when to just stop. That's okay, it doesn't need much more. But it does need a shadow, so let's give it some ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. And I want that, that shadow on that building to look like it came from this tree. So we are giving this sort of like a foot from that tree, and then I'm gonna let the shadow just sort of dance and play across the wet road here. A little bit like that. And then up the road, or that patch of grass there. There, then that sort of suggests that that came from that, that shadows from here. Okay, well that is pretty much as far as I think I should take this. Um, give that a little bit more interest here. All right, well that wraps up this video from plein air painting inside my car. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it and I really enjoyed it too. Um, I was actually very comfortable and um, yeah, go ahead and give this a try. I mean, no excuse. You guys gotta get out and try plein air painting sometime. Um, but yeah, enjoy and have a wonderful weekend. And again, those links are below if you are interested in some of those upcoming videos as well as the workshops. A couple of them are full. But if you wanna join the waiting list for the Ireland workshop, sometimes people can't make it. <clears throat> that is July 1st through the 5th, as well as the Destin, Florida workshop. That is May 1st through the 4th. And that one, they're both full, but you can be on the waiting list if you want. And then um, we have, I have England where I will be teaching at, towards the middle end of July. All of these are on my website. I will be teaching um, plein air painting as well as watercolor painting in England. So excited about that one. And then um, later in the year, I will be in Australia as well as San Diego. So go to my website and look at those. I will be getting more information on those uh, later in the year workshop. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much for joining me. All right, bye-bye.